Hey everybody back. I uh, just wanted to highlight a quick 10 card recap of some of the, the things I've picked up recently in the last uh, two weeks. It's been kind of a, a light two weeks for me. I'm, I'm saving up to, to hopefully win some big stuff later on this week. But I uh, wanted to start by showing you here a really nice uh, 1954 Gil Hodges. Uh, it's just a VGX4, but it's got really good eye appeal. I love the color on that card, that solid yellow in the background. Uh, somebody had posted here uh, maybe last month about me putting a uh, Gil Hodges video together with all my Gil Hodges collection. I haven't got around to doing that, but uh, hopefully in the future I can do that. Uh, another Gil Hodges on the right, uh, 1960 tops. It, uh, it says World Series Game 4. He had a home run uh, to win the game and that, and this card kind of uh, shows that. It's pretty neat. And then sticking with 1960 here, this uh, Sherm Lawler. He was an all-star catcher back in back in the late 50s, early 60s. And then just a, a common uh, Art Ditmar. It, uh, it's a really nice looking, excellent mint six. That's why I picked it up, didn't pay a whole lot for it. Just saw that and thought, oh, that's a pretty clean looking 62 tops. Uh, pretty tough year. But I uh, picked that one up. And then this one down here, uh, it's a common, but it's a uh, 1964 top stand-ups. I've always been a big fan of the top stand-ups and, uh, and that I just love the solid colors, the yellow and the green, how they complement each other. And then just uh, the, the nature of the 64 stand-up, it's tough. I mean, it was designed to be punched out by kids. So to, there's still quite a few good examples or, or, or good clean copies out there. But uh, it's a real popular set. Uh, one day I'd love to own the set, but I'm... I'm a long, long way from that, but uh, if I ever I see them on the cheap, uh, like I did this Gary Peters, I'll pick it up. And uh, just as long as it's a, a, about an, e, an X5 or higher grade, and that's what I'm looking for in here. So this met the criteria, didn't pay a lot for it, so I added it to the collection. And this card right here uh, from my Juan Marichal collection, this 64 NL Pitching Leaders, it's kind of, uh, it's oddly very, it's a lot more expensive than some of the 80, uh, this, the 64 Leaders. I don't know why it's more expensive. Uh, I don't know if there's just certain issues with the card, maybe centering issues. But it's a tough one to pick up in a near mint 7. So I saw this in an excellent mint 6 for a really nice price. And was really happy to add it to the collection. Once again, yeah, this the, the whole goal of this was to pick up some cool cards that I wanted without paying a whole lot of money. As I'm trying to save up for something a little bit bigger. That's coming up here in a couple days or so. Uh, then this 1974 Top Stamps Willie McCovey. I, I don't think I paid more than two dollars for that. Just a little nice little piece for the Willie McCovey collection. And then on to something. This is probably the most expensive item. It is the most expensive item I, I've bought in the last couple of weeks. This is a uh, from my Pete Maravich collection. I love this card. The, this 1971 Tops Pete Maravich. It's a second year card. It is a short print. Just love the imagery on that card. Uh, I think it's probably the, my my favorite. Pete Maravich card without a doubt. I know his, uh, his 70, that tall boy is pretty pretty sweet. I wish I had one. I'm still looking to pick it up, but uh, maybe one day I will. But until then, I really love this Maravich card. I love the, the colors, the contrast, the imagery. It's uh, really cool. And then uh, lastly, a couple larger items here that I bundled together in one order and uh, didn't pay a whole lot for these because obviously you can see that the grades, the grades are lacking on them, but still really cool pieces of history. And here, this uh, the Hoyt Wilhelm uh, Redman Tobacco card from 1953. And it still has the tab down there. That's key. A lot of them uh, you want to try if you can to get it with the tab still. Obviously, this one, the, the grade on it is a 2, and it's well-deserved. It has really been uh, beat up quite a bit. But that tab right there, uh, you could uh, cut it off and send it in to get a genuine player's cap, kind of like, like a Major League Baseball cap. So uh, to get those with the tab still on, that's a... That's a added plus and then here's something that I uh, picked up it's just a VGX4 but you know when it comes to these uh, 62 tops bucks uh, you just take them as you can get them sometimes and uh, I saw a couple years ago a, a one of these Frank Robinson ones in a higher grade of a seven it was like 40 bucks and I wish I'd bought it then because that was a really good price but uh, I, I didn't pay a whole lot for this one uh, in an excellent four and and the grade really wasn't it really isn't that important for me for some of these oddball items. I just really, uh, I just like the, the unique nature of them and, and just the, the story, the backstory on them. But these uh, Topps Bucks, they only did this one year. Did it for baseball and football. 
I believe they did it for football as well. But this is the third one of these I have. And, and none of them have graded out really well. But they have really good eye appeal. Uh, they were naturally folded when they were inserted in the pack. So they have a natural seam down the center. But uh, this one is still, I mean, really nice for a, a VGX4. But I wanted to finally get one in there for the, the Frank Robinson collection. Well, everybody, I, I, once again, I, I appreciate your posts and comments below. And uh, thank you again for watching.